what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Ranty Flat Earth, Sleeping Warrior, Arwin and The Plain Truth. Good to have you all. Yo, yo. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any signs of curvature, gentlemen? No. Anybody? Not on the Earth. Any signs of Earth-based axial rotation? No. Nope. Nope. Any no. evidence for the distance to the sun? Nope. Nope. There is no distance to the sun. Correct. But any scientific evidence of gravity? Yes. Nope. Yes. Yes. I watched an amazing video. I put it in the Master B chat. This guy demonstrated that mass attracts mass he put a heavier ball on a trampoline and he spun a smaller ball around and the masses attracted each other i i couldn't believe it what it was, <laughs> you're not telling me that the weight of the bowling ball was attracting it caused like you know like bending the yes, fabric a little bit yes i saw it no i saw it. the masses attracted each other no you're was, getting totally confused that's the bending of space fabric trampoline yeah <laughs> That's not that's not the, a gravitational force of attraction commonly described by either Einstein or uh, Newton. Newton, it's um, the trampoline. That was it was the metaphorical. Video. Listen, just stop talking. Stop talking right now. The guy who put the video out said, "This is a demonstration of mass attracting mass, and it was real, and it's happened." <laughs> okay, don't get excited. I am excited because I never thought I would see something like that. Well, I hope that the ballers out there jump all over that the way I did about this stupid stuff about water not being um, hydrogen and oxygen and tell the guy that that is not gravity. Somebody out there, be a responsible baller and put that guy out of his misery. Look, let's not, put it, <laughs> let's not condemn it too quickly. Look, if someone can show me the hypothesis and the experimentation that went along with it, then it might be scientific proof of gravity for all we know. <laughs> I don't even need that. It was just amazing. Excellent. Any evidence of a gas pressure without a container? No, nah, never. Nope. Nope. It's never really? going to happen. Shock horror. Any evidence <laughs> of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical Earth? Nope. Really? Seriously? I saw one once. Nope. But then Cartooned, I by chance? Nope. The deepest they've dug, Nathan, is only eight miles. Oh, well, that obviously means I won't get measured radius, but what about scientific evidence of radius? Uh, no. No? No evidence of the presupposition nope. of the R value? Really? Shock horror. Nope. All right, well, that concludes our housekeeping, unless you want to ask for uh, evidence of Bill Miller or M. Scott Beach. We found Bill Miller. Free Bill Miller. Right, well, that's it. That's housekeeping done then. So, uh, Soundly's made a hangout in the last 24 hours. Have you seen it? Soundly has? Yeah, okay. No. I'm not a subscriber, but tell us all about it. Basically, he claims that Jose's gone and uh, validated his observation and basically verified it and repeated it. Right. I validated it. I validated it from the UK yesterday. No, seriously, uh, that's what he's telling people. Yeah, I did too. How? What do you mean, how? 
how is that supposed to validate? Well, he's told people in his hangout that he says, thank you very much for Jose Gonzalez. He said he's went out and he's um, spent the time. And fair play, I mean, he deserves a pat on the back. He's done it. Um, but he claims that he's validated his own observation. And I'm like, what do you mean he's validated your observation, Sandy? What are you talking about? He hasn't validated your observation at all in any way. Your observation was curvy as hell, makes it look like we're on a basketball. And it looks like it's been coloured in with crayons. But Jose's looks like it's been recorded on a camera and it's flat and it doesn't show any bendiness whatsoever. Mm. And it do, but it does show a little bit of obstruction at the horizon, which we can all see is mirrored. And um, whatever the cause of that is, and whatever we call it, it's not the curvature of the Earth that's being obstructed. What's obstructing it is some atmospheric or optical effect. And you're telling people that Jose has validated your work. And I call bullshit, Soundly. Why would you tell people that? It's complete and utter lies. I played you three clips in the Hangout from yesterday where Jose said nothing of the sort. In fact, he said the opposite. But for some reason, Soundly's telling all his subs that Jose has validated his observation. And I'm thinking, what an utter, utter liar. So I've now, put again, in the chat. I'm going to ask, what, are there any ballers out there that are going to go and correct him and say, actually, he's not saying that soundly. You should pull that video down because it's not true. So where's the uh, integrity with the ballers? Presumably, no one's going to say anything. And what, once again, they're all going to be made to look like liars. So in the chat, we've got uh, three links. They're all the same of a video by My Perspective or Rory Cooper, where he analyzes Soundly's video. So check that out. I'll put the link or the link in the chat feed. So that's there running by now. I noticed Simon Dan released a video this morning mm. about Mark Sargent this time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've just finished and I'm actually rendering a video now to, to pick a couple of points up on uh, what he was saying. So just that point that out. He's just full of shit, as usual. Give us the broad strokes. What was he saying? Um, he, he went through his five points. He was asking what were the five points. You know, Mark Sargent has five points that he wants um, a scientist to answer. And Simon Dan reckons that he can answer all five of them well. He doesn't at all. For instance, the moon's shadow. Um, Mark Sargent says during the eclipse, the moon's shadow was only 70 miles wide. How is this possible on a, on a, a globe model? Um, Simon Dan's answer to that was to not talk about the size of the shadow, but to talk about we can calculate the distance to the moon. I can guarantee there won't be any science in his answer. No. No science, no evidence, just his perception. I don't know. I, I don't. So, it, what is this? His most recent video? Yeah, he released it this morning. So, I, I saw it and I was immediately taken aback by his lack of answers to the question. So, so again, he's failed to answer the question. So, like with me, when I asked him, "How do we get the distance to the sun?" I didn't want the rhetoric. I wanted the evidence, and he came back with radars to Venus. I was like, "Right, but I already knew that. What is the proof?" And he didn't give us any proof. He just told us that radars to Venus was the answer. Well, he didn't answer the question then. And if he's not answered the question again now with Mark, got to wonder what's going on with this gent. Hey, what's well, up, he was. It's like point one oh. was... Hello, was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, point one um, was something to do with uh, boats in the distance being brought back into view. And he goes on to talk about things like, this is Mark Sargent talking about, we can see much further than we should be able to, et cetera, et cetera. That was the point. He was also talking about boats in the distance. He made an arbitrary 50 mile um, remark about boats being 50 miles away that you can bring back. And Mark Sargent made 50 mile observation. Is that what you just said? No, no. He claimed that you can bring boats back up to 50 miles away. Mark Sargent said that. I believe so, yeah. I think that's how it came across in in his in the way he presented it. But reading through the lines, we know what he meant, that boats can be brought back, but also you can see for 50, 60, 70 miles. But he didn't, he, you know, the way he said it and presented it was more like, you know, he was talking about the boat. So Simon then clearly picked up on that and said he's never seen a boat being brought back over 50 miles over the water, which, to be fair, I mean, I don't think anybody has. You know, I think the chances of that actually happening would be impossible just due to the atmospherics and the, the narrow angle that you'd have to be viewing it at. However, we do see an awful lot further than we should, and that was the point. The point was that, not the boat. Can you, right, turn, your, so, can you turn your speakers? Down. Can you turn your speakers down a bit, Anthony? You're causing feedback. So essentially, he's just misrepresenting and he's cherry picking, and 
you know, I mean, he's, he's avoided answering questions that he should be answering. Um, and he's called it a debunking his top five um, flat earth proofs, which it is hey, nothing Drake, of the sort. can you hear us? Hello? Who? Me? Drake. Delta, Hello? Yeah. What's up, man? Good to have Yo. you. How you doing? Uh, let me just respond to that. Uh, Simon and Dan, if you want to see a video of a boat being put, pulled back from over the horizon that can't be seen with the naked eye, go and look up uh, Empty the Philadelphia. It's spelt a little bit weird, so you may struggle to find it straight away. But um, it's it's made by a person called Empty the Philadelphia, and the video is called uh, Analyzed, colon, How Boats Vanish Over the Horizon. And it's empty, the A Philadelphia, spelt weird. But type in yeah. analyze how boats vanish over the horizon and you'll hey, find Ginger. it. Anthony, Anthony, do the first part of the Philadelphia again, do it. Uh, analyzed how boats go, how? No, um, no, the first part of the name of the channel. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, we're getting uh, filled up. It's not Hello. me with the noise. Hey, Louis. Hello. Hey, Louis. Hello. Hey, Nami. Hey, guys. What's up? Sky, Anthony, stars, So, sun. just what's the first part of the Philadelphia of the channel? Michael something? No, I'll, yeah. what I'll do is I'll put it on screen because it is spelt weird. Okay. Uh, Nathan, if you wouldn't mind presenting. You're on. So, analyzed how boats vanish over the horizon. This is one video of about 50 videos, Simon Dan, where you cannot see beyond the horizon, but when you get your zoom out, you can then pull boats back that are not in the picture. Um, another one I can think off the top of my head was um, oh, the guy that... I um, can't remember what the guy's name is. The guy that left Flat Earth altogether and the baller said that he joined the ball side. And he's Matrix never been seen again. Not Simon. Not Thingy Dan. Um, not Tiger Dan. It's the other guy. Tiger Dan. Uh, the one. Tiger Nathan, Dan. The one that was talking to was Zoe. Tiger Dan. No, the, the, the um, I think I've got his video on here actually. So th this is this is one example, but another good example is Matrix D code. Pardon. Matrix D code. Yes, Matrix Decode. Uh, he's got videos of boats disappearing over the horizon too. There's loads of them. There's loads of loads of ones that disappear over the horizon. Um, but I want to know how you can have a molten iron core once the temper the cubic point of iron's been achieved, Simon Dan. What's the science for that? Crazy no, guy. Anthony, he was picking up the fifty mile claim. So it wasn't it wasn't that boats can be brought back, which you know, I've got plenty of videos of that myself, you know, of not being able to see a boat and zooming in and seeing it again. But he was picking up on his fifty miles, which it when the when Mark said it, it did sound like he was referencing bringing boats back fifty miles away over the curvature of the Earth. But right, I think right. that got I think that got misrepresented in the way he was saying it, and he picked up on that and he used that fifty mile claim, saying we have never seen a boat being brought back over fifty miles, which I don't right. think it's possible for that to happen. But yes, we can bring a boat back that's twelve or fifteen miles away. You know that should have long gone over the curve easily hold but, on hold know. on there's people who have got lasers pencil thin lasers on ships at 60 miles have they yeah okay would you be able to show get, that <laughs> if they can get direct line of sight with a laser to shoot it and bring it down then you've got line of sight with it actually i'm going to stand corrected it might be 60 kilometers so yeah before anyone pulls me up on that i'm ill leave me alone Anyway, I was talking to this guy today who's done some drone footage um, in and around Barrow. Uh, would you like to see some? Because I've got permission to share it. Love to. Right, okay. Uh, it, I'm going to show you the... Um, hide that. This is going to be the lighthouse. So there's always been claims about this lighthouse. And, you know, the, I've said that we can see the chimneys behind the sand dune, yeah? And they go, well, you can't see the base. You can't see the base. Well, I say, well, there's a sand dune in the way. And uh, this video is just going to prove that absolutely perfectly. He's, he's coming into land. So what we're looking at here, in this direction over on the left, is the viewing angle that I will have, or 
slightly behind him, you know, sort of like this direction. Uh, there's the Irish Sea. Here's the, the lighthouse, which you can see it. I want you to pay attention to this hill that's starting to rise up here. This is the sand dune that goes around the the side of it to protect it from the Irish Sea. And there's the there's the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this sand dune when it appears to uh, fall in line with the horizon up here. Uh, and we'll compare it to how high the house is. So as he's lowering his drone, he's coming down. Now the sand dune is rising up. And if I pause it just there, you can see that's pretty much level with the horizon. But look at the house. That's pretty much level with the horizon too. And you've just got the two little chimney stacks sticking up at the top. So my line of sight, which would intersect this, this wall, this sand dune, would allow me to only see the chimneys and the top of the actual um, of the actual lighthouse. And I can show you on this image, this video here, the same thing. So this, is, this isn't the best video that I could have found, but we've got the two chimneys, one chimney there, one chimney there. There's the lighthouse, and the brown underneath is the sand dune that's in the way from my line of sight. Proving Ooh. that we're actually seeing perfectly down to the bottom. There's your beach, 18 miles. Screw you, Globers. Flat as. Flat as. Is, is Anthony still here? Awesome. Anthony, yeah, you should be still here, yeah. I, I, I'm the Southern Israelite. He, he contacted me uh, the last few days, wanted to talk to me, and we've been back and forth commenting, and he wanted to talk to me about something. I just... I'm here if he wants to talk to me about something. Else. We'll give him okay. a tug when he comes off mic and remind him. But he's he's on mute. Maybe he's on a phone call or gone to get. Oh, there we go. What what was that? I missed it. Southern Israelites come to say hello. You've been trying to oh, get in touch with him. I have. I wanted to find out um, the issue on light. He was talking with. I can't remember whether it was um, Jared Buto or Red's Rhetoric. But you were talking about Fermat and how yep. he interacted with light with. His interpretations and his evidences, and I, yeah. um, I got sidetracked and interrupted. But I wanted to know what was the position with regards to the conclusion on the on the Fermat's principle on light, or well, what I, was the conclusion on light? Was it equally? I, I referenced what? I referenced like twelve books on the history of geometry, non Euclidean geometry, Euclidean geometry. I referenced all Morris Klein's works on Fermat, and I never saw anything even remotely close that said that Fermat created a um, a, a theory of refraction based on Euclidean geometry. Every, every reference that I have says exactly the opposite. It's, yeah, it's, the, it's linear. It's, it all says that uh, every reference that I have says that Euclid's elements and Euclid's optics do not take into account atmospheric refraction. I have Morris Klein stating that surveyors can't use it, can't use Euclidean geometry because they have to take into account atmospheric refraction. I got Percy Brigman stating that optical theories uh, regarding light are not euclidean i mean every every academic resource i have says that atmospheric refraction cannot be taken account for with euclidean geometry it's all it all has to be non-euclidean I, I agree so so, okay. so was that point accepted in the end no man they they, they just wanted to like like it, it do an appeal to intimidation on like how much geometry i knew and stuff and like they would not uh, would not like face the documents that I presented. And uh, that was in the non sequitur debate I had the other day. And, um, but I mean, I, I made a video about to Jared uh, a couple days ago because he was the one that brought it up. And um, no doubt it was just some, he, he was just probably reading something from some side chat. Whenever I debate these guys, they've always got like some football team on side chat waiting like to help them, you know, along in the conversation. And, you know, have you are you aware about what happened with Geo Strieber soundly and Sean Hufford? Am I aware of of all, all those guys? Yeah, I'm aware of all those. Yeah. Are you aware that Geo Strieber was caught getting coached by soundly, and um, basically Sean came in to muddy the waters? But yeah. for everybody else that hears he it, it's blatantly obvious that Geo's being fed by soundly, but they've got to make out in some way that there's some other plausible explanation, which they claim is my it's me playing the hangout. And it just so happens to coincide and make it sound like a coincidence that it sounds like a coherent conversation. Yeah. Obviously, I call bullshit. But my point is that they've actually been caught being fed. You know, when you said then that there's like a football team in the background 
Well, that's exactly what um, Gio Schreiber had. He didn't really have a football team, but he did have external help. So we now have evidence that they do do exactly that thing. Oh yeah, it's 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 pathetic. I mean, I I think it's kind of fun. Personally, I don't really take offense to it. I just I think it's fun that like I I get to go up against all these people myself. I I, I take it as a challenge, but like it's just pathetic <laughs> that they have to like get all this help from people on side chat and stuff. I think it's just pathetic. But um, you know, whatever. What I wanted to show you whilst you're on, um, Nathan, would you mind presenting my screen? Yeah, sure. I have a couple. I have a couple of papers that I want to show you. Okay. I don't know whether you're familiar or not, and if you're not, I'll um, I'll give you a copy of them because they're really good. Um, go with this one first. Right. This is um, <clears throat> with regards to refraction. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So bear with me. I got it. With regards to the light refracting, um, this talks not so much about uh, light refracting in air. It's talking about this, the, the individual refractive index indices of water vapor, uh, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, basically our atmosphere, but it's split into the components, uh, the constituent elements. So it talks about the refraction between the constituent ele elements. And it, it, it's complicated, but basically what it talks about is another way of measuring the effect of, the effect of refraction on atmospheric air. And the conclusion of it is that it's negligible. Um, there's the key word, negligible. Um, this document's worth citing if, uh, and worth having a read. Um, it's measured in a different way, and it's using an, um, a unit that I'm not familiar with, to be honest, and I don't really understand that the units of it. But the point of the overall conclusion is that the effects of refraction in the atmosphere is basically nothing. Um, it's so small, it's not worth considering. So that, that's one document. Um, the other document I want to show you is this one. Um, this is to do with a computer, a group of computer engineers. And what they were trying to do was simulate refraction on a computer game. And to do this, um, they had to take into account some considerations for what is refraction already. And one of the citations that they give in here, which I always uh, cite, and but again, it says the word negligible. Um, on the trajectory of light, it talks about when light passes from one non-homogeneous, blah, blah, blah. It's worth talking, it's worth reading, but under standard circumstances, the effects are negligible. Um, so there's another citation um, to do with the trajectory of light through uh, refractive mediums basically being nothing. What are the distances? Um, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt you guys. Can you just stress the importance of what you've just said? I know you had it highlighted. Just repeat it and stress the importance to an audience member who may not have been keeping along with what you've been talking about and understand the relevance and significance to what you've just said because it's very important. Well, on the on the Metabunk curve calculator, they use 7.6 times the radius of the Earth to be a general catch-all phrase for refraction, right? Mm -hmm. Which basically makes um, an arc. It's a <laughs> geometric arc. And light doesn't travel in arcs, light travels in straight lines. But they argue that because it's non-homogeneous and it's isotropic, it means that it can be an arc, and it's always an arc down. But we know that the effect soundly himself shows on his little tensus bayou observation that light bends up as well as down, not always down. But it said, this is a second citation that states that under, under, no, under standard or normal circumstances, the effects of refraction are negligible. Now, <clears throat> what this means is, under standard circumstances. So what I'll do is I'll pull up, I'll pull up his um, mega flump curve calculator to show you what I'm referring to. Um, meta flump. Meta hey, could you here. that last link that you had? Could you share that in chat? Yeah, I will do. I'll give you all three of them at the end of it. Yeah. Um, so standard refraction is supposed to be based on. All three of them at the end of it. Um, so standard refraction is supposed to be based on. Somebody's yeah, got them. You need to meet your page, page before you join, but good to have you on anyway, music. So under standard circumstances, the effects are negligible, right? Under these standard circumstances, the effects are negligible. Well, on his standard refraction citation on his website, he claims it's an approximation of the refraction expected on, oh, under average, oh, he's changed it, under average or standard atmospheric conditions. And then he links this, this phrase here, standard atmospheric conditions, now, we're looking for 76R, but in this citation that he gives, the variables that are, um, he's basing his 76R on are based on the this this part of the um, the maths, the model. Mm. And you have absolute temperature, you have altitude, you have pressure mm. and density, and you have to simultaneously solve the equations that relate to two parts of it, which gives you a continuous variable like what we see in Skunk Bay. But what he's saying is that he's basing his standard refraction based on this, 
But in this document, it doesn't mention 76R, which of course is a geometric curve. Mm. This is based on basically these variables here. And he claims that it's based on this document. It's clearly not. There's not the word um radius is not mentioned in here at all. I'll just is... I just summarize that as well. Sorry. So if you scroll up to this, sorry, go back to the page you were on a second ago, Anthony. If you just click the link for standard atmospheric conditions. So this is a standard atmosphere that's what's being detailed now what's being used in the metabunk calculation is terrestrial refraction specifically terrestrial refraction seven sixths of the presupposition of r that's what terrestrial refraction is by having this link it makes it sound like it's all based on atmospheric conditions it isn't it's called terrestrial refraction and it is seven sixths of the radius of earth that's all it is and the Sorry. radius, of course, is not mentioned anywhere in this document. So the four cited, the four variables that are like like in the maths here for the standard atmospheric atmosphere, he claims that seven six times R is what this is based on. So he's given a citation for what he claims seven six R is based on. But when you look into it, there's no mention whatsoever of a radius or even the seven six R. But he says flippantly, "Well, it's just an approximation." Well, no, it's not based on anything. It's you plucked it out your ass. So that's. That, Can I ask a question? Yeah, go on. I, can I ask a question for clarification? Yeah, go on. <clears throat> um, Nathan, what you just said then in my mind is that we're, when we're talking about refraction atmospheric, we're talking about <clears throat> that effect of the atmosphere on the travel of light and the, and the ability to see that. When you're talking about 7.6, you're saying it's the curve of the Earth that is causing the refraction. Am I, am I, am I interpreting what you're saying? The distinction between those two things one is a natural phenomenon which is real the other one is based on 76r and is not atmospheric but terrestrial because the earth is what is curving it am i am i saying it correctly yeah spot on okay thank you i'd like to add something which is that you know you can argue these papers all you like but is there any actual physical evidence that there's any refraction within the atmosphere because in order to have refraction you need an angle of incidence according to snell's law and all of the refractions well, snell's, snell's law doesn't actually apply in the atmosphere well exactly that's what i'm saying but i'm saying that i think that hey before I, just let me finish the um something to consider is that all of the so-called refraction that we see in the atmosphere is very close to the surface, which I think indicates that it's more likely that we're seeing diffraction than refraction. I don't, is there any actual experiments, tests, or anything that can demonstrate that there's any refraction in yeah. air? Yeah. There is? What? Uh, I wouldn't say experiment's the right word, but we can observe the effects of refraction. Um, how do you know it's refraction? Because you can see it. Watch. But how do you know it's not diffraction? Well, the, the what the refraction is generally accepted to be the distortion or the or the bending of light, and we can see in the Skunk Bay footage that at the beginning of the day, at like eight fifty nine, nine o'clock in the morning, the effects of refraction are quite small. We don't really see that much of them, but, but by dinner you, time, you understand, no. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that all the effects that you're seeing of that kind are close to the surface? Sure. But th this so this that, is moving in that, the picture. That indicates the fact that we don't see refraction high up in the sky ever is, indica is an indication that what we're seeing what's no, causing no, I mean, that's because there's nothing really to see really up in the sky that's not it has true. to be clear enough to even see that far so yeah what's well, going to be bending all over the place the blue have sky you, have you guys seen steve torrance's demonstration of of putting a, a plane of stars on a flat earth and then adding atmosphere and it divides them into two i have stars. okay that's the one where you got the slide. It's got like a vertical bar that moves up and down. One's with refraction, one's without, and it's basically catch right. one catches the other up. Yeah, he shows <laughs> how if you add, if you add the out you 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 start in Cinema 4D with a plane, an Earth plane, and then you put a plane of stars over it, and then you add in the atmosphere. The stars break up into two different systems of rotation. One's going clockwise. One's going counterclockwise. Yeah. No, just a simulation. And what I'm saying is that without an angle of incidence, how can you have refraction? Well, well, you can't can, have, can I just uh, add something? Sorry, Anthony. Just the to, same media. Sorry, just to add one more thing to what Nummy's saying. We're seeing the tide rise and fall, right? Therefore, we are seeing a limitation on our viewing angle as the day progresses in that skunk bay footage. 
So you could easily argue that it was diffraction causing those effects as opposed to refraction. And I think I agree with Nummy. Yeah, I'd also like to say just to address what Arwen, Arwen's criticism of what I'm saying is that, yeah, there's plenty to see in the sky. There's planes, balloons, clouds. We, would, we should see refraction of clouds. We would never see refraction of clouds. Never. I'm saying all these so-called refraction you know? effects. How would you know? How would you know? Because you could if, similar kinds of photography of those time lapses and things but like that. Clouds well, are not suppose, fixed. They're that's not, true. Okay, they're well, have a, a measurable uh, reference. One last thing. Measure. Let me just finish off with the uh, Southern Israelite. Um, the third paper that I often cite states that um, as a result, ignore the first bit, it just says light traveling in the atmosphere will undergo refraction and the traveling path will deviate from a straight line. Well, we know that Fermat's principle is based on um, the trajectory of light being from straight. Basically, it says that light travels in straight lines and it'll take the, the path of the least um, amount of time to get there. So it goes in a straight line. It doesn't go in an arc. This is another paper that, state that states that line is linear. It's not um, it, um, it's not following a geometric curve of any kind. It's not based on a curve. It's straight. Light travels in straight lines according to their model. But they apply Mick West and the refraction nonsense is based on a curve. So uh, when I was listening to you talking with whoever it was that you were talking to, you were making the same points about um, what I what we've all been talking about for a while. Um, but I wanted to know, did they? What was the conclusion of that point? Because in the end, I got sidetracked. Um, but my point is that light does go in straight lines. You were right to argue it. If these documents are of any use to you, I'll pass them all over to you because it all talks about light going in a straight line. There's no arcs. Well, um, as far as the the, the debate when I was talking to Jared and, and Steve about it, it was that, um, was that Fermat's principle was based on Euclidean geometry and that it accounts for atmospheric refraction. Who said that? Yeah. Did they say that or did you uh, say that? Jared said that. I didn't yeah, that's say not that. true. Yeah. 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 I, that's not true. The, I think you should challenge these people to, to prove that it's refraction and not diffraction that they're seeing, because I think that this whole, refraction conversation is just one giant mislead no that because doesn't make any sense yeah, but the point in question no, 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 no. hold on nami diffraction only happens when you look over a surface that's so, right yeah so it doesn't happen up there so any miraging effects or obstruction for foreground things that is diffraction but that doesn't mean that there is just general bending going on it's just very little yeah, but the and point this is even officially about. admitted. It's oh, insignificant. No, no, but Arwen, I'm yes. saying is there any pr there's, there's no angle of incidence. Do you understand what an angle of incidence is? Sure, but listen, guys, this is a tangent. Are you saying that diffraction doesn't work at all in any sorts if it's just in a in a, a non regular medium like air with perhaps some moisture in it and extra heat at certain locations that there is no refraction of any kind going on because we can measure refraction very easily uh, when the medium changes from air to glass to water for example would, you can see I think quickly, that refraction, but there's still some going on no i think refraction singular medium but it's very it, slight no if you look at the how you know what can be measured in refraction by snell's law the law of refraction that you need a surface you need Guys. an angle no, no that's need, diffraction that that's that's a refraction you I'm saying that you need to go from like air to glass to water to get what's called refraction. Right. That yeah, that's right. Listen, listen. That it's a tangent. This. The point is, is is light Euclidean or is it linear? That's the point that I was trying to address. And I agree with Southern Israelite. There is no evidence that it's Euclidean. It is all based on straight lines. So if, if they're certain that it's Euclidean, it's not. Um, these three documents do not support that position. So I just wanted to offer them to him, but I can't get in touch with him because he has comments disabled on his videos and we can't send messages with him. No, I, I, I have, I, I put the comments on, uh, I put the comments up again. I just wanted a few days of break from those lunatics. Dude, they're just like a pack of hounds. And yeah. I just wanted a few days of, of a break from them. And um, I put, I put the comments available again. They're, they're up again. Yeah, well, I, what I'll do is I'll drop these three in the back chat in, in Hangouts, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then um, to just pick from, but all three of them don't support Euclidean geomet geometry for uh, refraction. They're all linear, and it's negligible as well. So it's like it, they're exaggerating this claim of refraction, and they're also fundamentally flawed on what basis they base it on. It's not yeah. based on Euclidean geometry. It's not at all. It's complete nonsense.
Yeah, I, I, I thought I, I, they, I always have to keep in mind that their tactics during debates and stuff like I, I should have called Jared on that. I should have asked him for a citation immediately because I told him, I'm like, dude, I got an applied a optics journal here. I've got Morris Klein, who's probably the greatest philosopher of mathematics to ever live. He's all saying exactly what I'm saying. And they're saying I'm wrong. I'm like, that's, there's no way. I'm sorry. <laughs> all the evidence supports it being linear. Yeah. Do you not okay. find that as uh, we've seen the same thing on the debate? So, for example, with George Lettingnuk, I could say it with a cold, can't say it in the best of days, but he was basically defying what the Coriolis effect is and introducing third reference frames for the bullet or ball or plane just so it ties in with the narrative so he's literally defying the wikipedia ex example and the standard rhetoric not even rhetoric the standard accepted um understanding of coriolis just because it doesn't fit with the narrative of the ball earth so i would be it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that did you say it was steve that was doing that who did you say was doing it jared jared so yeah, yeah it doesn't surprise me in the slightest they will literally go against the standard narrative if it doesn't fit with the ball which that's which what, for me that's is what like, they're doing with refraction yeah indeed what I, I just want to say we're, is that we're putting the documents i'm sorry i i just i'm i'm in chat right now i don't see the documents in chat oh it's not letting me send them because they're not pictures um if you open up are you in the back chat on google or are you in or I'm give me an email address chat. the reason why these documents are valuable mate is because they, although they may exist in other places online um two of them were mit documents that were cited on a university website and m scott veach um basically didn't like them he took issue with them and I said, well, go and put in a complaint and see if you can get them removed. And literally the next day, one of them was gone. And the following day, the second one was gone. So they don't seem to exist now. But if they do exist, they're not where I know where to find them. So they're valuable um, in that you can't get them easily anymore. So if you send me, an, if you put an email address. Um, yeah, I got, well, I, I put it in side chat right now. I put my email address in side chat. In the side, uh, when you say side chat, do you Hangouts. mean the green chat? Hangout side if chat. If you go to the Hangout link and you hit the blue chat uh, option at the top left. You, yeah, the you'll hangout see right. chat. Hangout chat. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. We need to get this stuff written down yes, in please. presentable papers. The stuff that we're talking about. This stuff can't just be on audio. We have to have it down. Yeah. Argument, proposition, conclusion. This I I, I was I'm under the impression there needs to be a complete non-Euclidean geometry just developed from this. Like I, I don't I don't see how, and maybe somebody has already written it. They probably have, but I'll I'll, I'll study the issue. But um, I I think that a complete new new geometry needs to be written. E Euclid Euclid's wrong, man. I'm sorry. It's just... Can you explain why? There's going to be people who listen to this. I've got the vaguest idea what you're talking about. So can you can you give us the dumbed down version for a 15 year old so that the audience yeah, the, the well the first of all is the the idea of euclidean space that's number one i mean we're clearly not living in space we don't breathe space it, it's nonsense we're, we're not living in space secondly is the the idea of like trying to represent the lines of, ge of uh, geometric dimensions as if they're uh as if they're light rays like that, that, that concept, Morse Klein goes into detail on that in his, in his um, mathematics for non-mathematicians, how it's, it's ridiculous to use Euclidean geometry as a surveyor and think that rays of light are, are re representative of the lines that you're seeing in geometric dimensions. And uh, it, it, it's, I, I, need, I need myself to, to write, a, a, you know, study this more and, and read about it more. It's extremely complicated. Yeah, I would say that try to look at proofs for these um, propositions as well. You know, like I say, like I don't, I have never seen any evidence that there's any refraction within the atmosphere. People always just cite papers and talk about all these optical theories, but I've never actually seen any kind of test of that idea. And if you look at the description of Snell's law, it says, formula used to describe the relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction when referring to light or other waves passing through a boundary between two different isotropic media. So if you have no boundary, you have no angle of incidence. So if you just have a gradient in some sort of medium like air, which is mostly empty space, apparently, that there, you can't identify the angle of incidence and therefore you can't 
trace any kind of refractive process. It doesn't make sense, right? And really what we see is that the, distor the optical distortions we see are always close to a surface, you know, indicating that it's probably diffraction and that this whole terrestrial refraction thing might just be a complete error or this information that's meant to lead us away from understanding the what we're seeing generally speaking you know it's it all is there to just information it is this information because i i believe i've come across people that have researched this completely independently uh, it's just hearsay basically but it seems that there is some very minor refraction going on but it's simply not even close to what is actually required for some kind of terrestrial R-based refraction. Okay, but I've Arwen, even I'm had gonna... people here in the back chat. It was offline, but they were, uh, yeah, they were. But struggling. Arwen, what I'm saying is that according to the definition of refraction, if we can't, if we can't identify the boundary, then we can't identify an angle of incidence. And if you don't have those conditions, then you don't. How can you? claim it's refraction and not something else like diffraction mm -hmm. right so you want to present requires a surface yeah well there's the surfaces of the moles themselves right the what like there's some the surfaces of the molecules in the air that are causing like what you know we, we talked before about scintillation right so what's no, causing it's, like, no 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 Ref diffraction is very specific it's a specific yeah. effect that requires a a solid surface. It doesn't well, work with droplets. That's that's not diffraction. Diffraction is no, very no, no. specifically has it, to do it, with obstruction, basically. It depends on what you think is the cause of diffraction, whether it's you know that it has to do with the electrical properties of the material that light is passing close to. Right, that's probably the the real cause of what it of is defined by the case, I'm saying is there some kind of test that you could do that would prove that it was. I don't understand how you can claim refraction if you can't identify an angle of incidence and a boundary. How can you claim that it's refraction if you can't identify those aspects of the? Because all you the, have to uh, all you have to do is spin a good enough explanation that it sounds good. No, 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 no. I know you're being facetious, Travis, but no, you can't. Is the answer. You can't. That's the bottom line, Nummy. You can't. And that's not what they do anyway. They apply terrestrial refraction, a very specific thing that just simply applies 76R. Has sod all to do with yeah. anything. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that the, even to invoke refraction at all seems very dubious, considering if you can't identify an angle of incidence and a boundary. I agree. Because I completely agree. All right, uh, uh, Anthony, thanks for the documents. I got them. I'm going to bed. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Good night. Thanks for joining. Going to bed. Where is he? Australia, probably. Oh, it sounds like he's in the United States. Maybe he stayed up all night. Doing... Yeah, he's a, he's a southern Israelite, so that's, I think, a reference to also the south because he's got a, uh, a rebel flag in his icon. Hi, was is that was not was? Hello, Wizla. Wizla, hello. Wizlas, hey. Wizlas. Uh, he's he's not at all. Don't troll. whiz on the electric fence. That's the Wizla. Yeah, let's kick him out if he's just a troll. Hopefully, we haven't lost uh, half the panel. Sure? Fascinating conversation. Yeah, I, I find this one interesting because this refraction thing just, it seems very unclear, it seems very muddy, but people talk about it and use it to pre make various arguments and you can find all of these, you know, I could, people end up arguing documents rather than arguing evidence, but I think that I would like to see the whole thing broken down to just, you know, can we prove that there's any refraction within a medium without a boundary, without an angle of incidence? I don't know. It's to me, it doesn't make any sense because the whole definition of refraction depends on those, on those variables, right? Right. Yeah, I'm definitely on the same page as you, to me. Yeah, I just would like to put. I I put that out there numerous times, but it's just I'm trying to. I think it's very important that to to consider that for people because I think this refraction thing ends up just getting 
it just muddies the waters of the conversation endlessly on both sides. Yeah, and I think that's why they called it terrestrial refraction because I can just shorten that to refraction and then it completely muddies the waters. Everyone thinks you're looking for refraction. And like you say, there's no change in medium. Yeah. Yeah, and then the specific angle of the boundary is going to determine the effects of the refraction, right? So it's like if the air was, if like one air mass was at a 45 degree angle to another air mass, you would get a completely different effect than if it was 90, if there was like a, the boundary was at 90 degrees relative to the ground. So you would just, you would get all kinds of weird effects that we don't at all see, right? We, we, what we see is what they call this negligible amount of refraction is, is actually more likely to be like molecular diffraction, I think. Like, mo you know, what they call- uh, You have no proof that diffraction even works like that. The, it, diffraction is defined by looking past surfaces. That is how it has been established. Yeah, I'm assuming that there's surfaces of molecules. No. There's no surface of a molecule? That you have no proof that there is. Well, how about if we take water molecules in the air and then we condense them into water? So yeah, then it, it's not a singular molecule. It's very simple. Okay, but don't you think the molecule is probably a physical object occupying some amount of space? You have no proof that it is. Okay, so you when can it, only deduce it through chemistry. So when okay, you're right, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think of that. I think it's not. I, I'm just saying, yeah, okay. So the possibility there's this possibility that it's diffraction and not it's refraction. It's fiction. It is attributing a, a, an ability. To something that uh, yeah you can't prove has any relation okay, to that. So what you're that saying fraction is established have, no, surface. You're saying molecules don't physically exist. That when water evaporates, you can't it turns... prove it. It is just like Einsteinian gravity. Okay, you have no, no proof no, that prove it's it. even related. So no, it's good not luck. Like good luck with it. It's not like Einsteinian gravity. Because, yeah, it is. You no, can't it isn't. Prove it. Okay, but you're not going to let me actually make an argument, are you? Because now you, you made your arguments pretty clear. No, no, I was you about speculate to speculate that it can be diffraction at mo on a molecular level. Every molecule yeah. could be slightly diffracting, but you have no proof that diffraction is even related to that because there's always a solid surface involved in diffraction in the official version of it. So it's yeah, just it complete, complete the out there that. speculation comes down to what's the under it's not always a solid surface either it could be a liquid yeah, surface a surface a surface that is distinguishable right. yeah okay i don't observable argument. everything with observation yes. you don't have an argument either you're it's not like you can I have an argument against your argument but you just argue to argue you know, no, rather than you do no i'm out. just saying no you're wrong this is complete speculation out of nowhere doesn't mean i'm wrong I'm, I can acknowledge what aspects of it are speculation, but I'm saying that the idea of refraction in the atmosphere is also speculation. That's what I'm trying to point out. I'm, I'm, I think Sorry, I was pretty clear. It's, no, it's, I think if you rewind the It's like the saying you, that, that hey, buoyancy up. and density rewind, is caused by surface the, tension. No, if you rewind the tape, you're going to find that I said could be caused by diffraction. Could be, right? I've been cautious. I'm you're not like... Mis you're misconstruing what diffraction is when you do that. No, I'm not. No, I'm you not. are. It's specifically defined. No, just can I jump in real quick, guys? Guys, you have can to I accept jump in this real idea quick? that molecules like are not physical, which is quick. ridiculous. It's too many presuppositions I would be you have no proof for. Gentlemen, no, you have no proof that you, you. What's your proof that it's refraction, are we? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I have a request, please. You, if you, if you just dismiss a moron. me, must have gone with the conversation. Hello. Forget it. I won't even bother. Hey, Jimbo. Listen, I. I had a, I had a, I, I had a request. On oh, hold, on, hold on, Jimbo, no. just one second. No. Just let no. Travis hold go. On, He's just been trying to get in for ages. Go on, Travis. Okay, thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, you guys can dismiss me if you want. That's fine. I just have a request. I would be interested to hear Nummy reiterate Arwen's point and Arwen reiterate Nummy's point so that, and, and then not talk over each other. I'm not doing that so that you guys can be educated and corrected. I, right. want, cl I want clarification. So don't interrupt. Restate the other person's point, please. All right. It seems like Arwen's saying that we have that molecules aren't don't have surfaces because they're not physical objects. That once water evaporates into the air and becomes moles, 
individual molecules of water that it ceases to be a physical phenomenon and just turns into some kind of magic non-physical thing and has no surfaces and then when it condenses back into water then it becomes a physical thing and has surfaces again that's that's how i understand Ar arwen's argument and that i need to prove that that molecules have some sort of physical basis right in order to it, otherwise i'm i'm creating general relativity style total nonsensical invention if i if, if i entertain the idea that molecules are physical in nature that's what i think that's what he's arguing which seems to me to be no completely beyond absurd but okay thanks for making that up out of nothing really okay I think all right really hold on hold on hold on let's go now arwin now you try to address what nummy was saying what what was nummy saying what was his point nummy was saying that Perhaps uh, the uh, presumed bending of air or uh, any kind of uh, visual phenomena is caused by diffraction, speculating that uh, diffraction could actually happen on a molecular level, even though there is no actual solid surfaces involved in that. And with solid surfaces, I mean uh, solid enough to be observable. Water it is a specific observ hey, Jimbo, be quiet. Jimbo, please. Because it is specifically observed surfaces that cause diffraction. That is How official. How do you know that? Yo, that is official. Wait, wait, you wait, even conceded wait, guys, to guys. that. That's official. So argument from authority? Well, yeah, what if it's I... From the one that We're actually discovered it. Chaos. And I was hoping for clarification. Now look at what, okay, there, I can show you papers that describe a molecular diffraction of light. So officially, there is molecular diffraction of light, if that even matters. I mean, why would you argue it's official? You know how stupid that is? You're like, oh, there's, there, there's no diffraction on molecules. It's official. Like, that's your argument. It's official. No, that's not what that's I ridiculous. said at all. I said it has to do with observable surfaces. Does no, it, it not? It, yeah, but you're claiming molecules don't have surfaces. So it does. You just say, yeah, it does. Observable no, surfaces. Well, if you can point to me saying. to the observable Argument surface of a molecule, I'd be very interested to see it. Vision. Yeah, well, I'm not claiming that this is... I'm not claiming well, that this is... Well, there gone. you go. Yeah, well, I made that clear from the beginning. But I'm not inventing general relativity either. The idea that molecules have a physical basis, i.e. have a surface. You just conceded to all the, my criticisms that it is not possible because it's not involved. It's not related to the effect of diffraction. So thank you for that. All right. It is wild I'm fantasy not, speculation. That is called I'm science not. fiction. It's applying something that is part of physical reality and proven and then speculating into unprovable territory. That's called no, science not. fiction speculation. No, it isn't because I'm, I'm saying that the idea that molecules have a surface is not such an unreasonable supposition to entertain. And then when we look at the actual evidence that we see that, dif that the dis optical distortions are happening on the level of near, typically near a surface and very little in the air, Right. So what I'm saying is that the tiny little? amount, yeah, so very little. Some? Well, what is yeah, the percentage? That that's caused what is by the percentage? What's the percentage spectrum? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to bother. You know what, Arwen? I don't think you have any interest. Oh, so in you idea. don't have any actual data? It's yeah, I, I do, fact. but you're not willing to listen to me. So I'm not going to yeah, bother. Yeah, I am. I am listening and I'm no, feeding you back exactly you're what you're saying. Prat. You're an obnoxious prat. Forget it. Oh, I'm at home it. now. Okay. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I made my point. I think the intelligence... Yeah, go play in your little castle. That's fine. Can I say something on diffraction yeah. now? Go ahead, Jimbo. Go ahead. In the air, we know there are water droplets. Now, droplets are usually round and, you know, undulating a little bit. Now, when light rays hit a water droplet in the air, you cannot predict which direction the light is going to go through them. It's omnidirectional. That causes a blurring effect. So I, I kind of think myself, when you see blur around buildings at a far distance through your camera, it's in part 
diffraction, not refraction. Refraction, when light hits a mirrored surface, it bounces off at an equal angle. If you shine a light directly at a mirror, it bounces right back to you. That's refraction. But diffraction, is that, is that we use it. In, the light is refracted. It's a refractory process. It's it's right. bounce. It's mirrored. It's refraction. Refraction well, is mirrored. You're, mirroring, echoing, essentially. you're exactly the, you're echoing exactly what I'm saying. That's yeah, exactly the water droplets are real, and how light hits them and scatters is not the same way as refractive. It's omnidirectional and causes blurring. And, and that's diffraction. Diffraction, like, a, 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 I don't know, like, again, it's a round surface. If you try to take an undulating round surface that's transparent and, and shine a light through it, you don't know where that light is going to bounce out or come out of. Well, according to Snell's law, it's the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of uh, refraction, right? Yeah, all I know is that the water droplets, they, they you can't predict where light is going to come out. A crystal, you can. A prism, whatever. You can predict how the light's going to separate and, you know, yeah. make a spectrum. But with the water droplet, you can't say it's going to be upper right, lower left, straight through. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!